Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Joe. I first became aware of photographer Nick Voracek's work on the F-295 Pinnell Photography Discussion Forum. And ever since then, I've followed his work through his blog, Pinholica. And more recently, I became aware of a book that he had put out back uh, quite a few years ago called The Pinhole of Nature. And this book is purposefully inspired and partly patterned after William Henry Fox Talbot's seminal work, The Pencil of Nature. And I'd like to talk a little bit about The Pinhole of Nature, Nick Dvorak's work. Stay tuned. Nick Dvorak's The Pinhole of Nature is inspired by William Henry Fox Talbot's The Pencil of Nature, circa 1844. As Dvorak says, The Pinhole of Nature is about specific characteristics of pinhole images and the experience of making them, how it differs from lensed photography, and since it really doesn't have any practical use, how I feel about it as art. Both The Pencil of Nature and the pinhole of nature consist of 24 photographic plates with accompanying short essays. In his foreword to The Pinhole of Nature, Dvorak quotes William Henry Fox Talbot from The Pencil of Nature saying, The picture, divested of the ideas which accompany it and considered in its ultimate nature, is but a succession or variety of stronger lights thrown on one part of the paper and of deeper shadows on the other. Writing of Fox Talbot, Dvorak says, he wrote the pencil of nature to convey to a public who had never experienced photography what some of the characteristics of the new way of image making were, how it differed from drawing and painting, and suggests uses it might be put to, which include portraiture, fine art, and some novel ideas like insurance documentation and hints at x-ray photography. For a Victorian country gentleman scientist, it's an extremely readable book, very personal and even a little chatty in some places. And then speaking of his own work, Dvorak says, the present work consisting of photographs accompanied by a little essay is inspired by and modeled after the pencil of nature. I've also been influenced by John Sarkowski's looking at photographs, and I remember seeing artworks in the 1970s consisting of several images and a bit of text that concluded with something like, quote, this statement and these four images constitute the nature of this work, unquote. I don't remember any of the works, but the idea sounded like fun. Dvorak's work is very intimate and domestic, and it's typically pinhole-like in its subject matter and rendition. And one great example of this is Plate 2, titled My Spectacles in the Soap Dish on the Window Sill in the Bathroom. He writes, it's really kind of easy to understand and visualize what's happening in pinhole photography. In this picture, the sun shone through the window, was blocked by the curtain in some places, traveled in a straight line, and recreated the pattern of the lace on the soap dish and window sill. The pinhole is like the openings in the lace curtain. Light shines on a spot in a scene, is reflected or not, in proportion to the reflectance of the material, the surface texture, and the angle of the light. Some of it goes through the pinhole, continues in a narrow beam, and shines, or not, on the light-sensitive material. The picture is the sum of all the possible spots in the scene, making corresponding dots on the film plane. When referring to the difference between shooting digital photography and pinhole, he says, I do take a few pictures with lenses. I've got a digital still camera in my backpack now. They're really practical devices, but that's just not the same. When I do it, it's not art unless it's pinhole. You can do anything you like, however. The freedom to do anything is a big theme in the wider pinhole photography community. People make cameras out of some amazing things and do clever things to either make it more convenient or to do creative things with the image. I can't seem to do anything about the way I make these pictures. When I wonder about the famous question, why pinhole? I, the answer I come up with sounds more like a diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder. I know about lots of things to do differently, 
I just can't get interested. I seem to think I have to do it this way. In plate four, titled Muddled Rows, Dvorak writes, probably because of the long exposures and relatively unsharp optics like they had in the 1840s, pinhole photography tends to give an impression of antiquity. Pinhole images are often associated with the first decades of photography. The common pinhole practice of using paper negatives is characteristic of the earliest photographs by Talbot, and the long exposures are characteristic of any large format photography. The appeal of pinhole photography is often characterized as a reaction to the current ultra-high-tech nature of photography. Dvorak writes of some of his influences in photography, saying, I will admit to the influence of Talbot, of course, and Julia Margaret Cameron of the early photographers, and also the pictorialists, particularly Steichen, Group F64, mainly Weston and Cunningham, and the modern minimalists, Penn and Avedon, also form the way I see how I want to photograph things. If you're looking for inspiration, look to all of photography. Look for what you want to photograph, and then see what Pinhole does to it. Dvorak talks a little about the kind of subject matter he's interested in. He writes, I specifically seek things of a temporal nature, things that don't last very long. Most stuff moves and the sun actually zips along the sky pretty quickly, smearing sunbeams across a scene. Part of the appeal is kind of a macho competition just to see if you can pull off getting an image at all with a pinhole camera. And then in plate seven, Peace Rose Blossoms, he continues, because of the long exposures, movement is a really dominating theme in pinhole photography. It was the same in the first decade or so of photography, and multiple second exposures were pretty common until the 20th century. I am constantly aware of movement. One thing that inspires me about Dvorak's photography is how he's able to seamlessly fit it into his daily life. Here in plate eight, titled Parsley, he says, people often express amazement at the length of exposures. I suppose they imagine you have to pay attention to a picture in order for it to happen. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, which has a south and west window through which the sun shines. So often I'm cooking when I see things I'd like to take a picture of and I just continue doing that while the shutter is open. Taking pinhole photographs indoors has the advantage of having no wind to blow things around. So you can take close-ups of some very delicate stuff especially in a case like my sunny south kitchen window, if you don't bump them while you're cooking, that is. And continuing with this domestic theme, in plate nine, garbage can, he writes, 17 of the 24 photographs in The Pencil of Nature are taken at Talbot's home, Laycock Abbey. The abbey itself appears in eight of them. All my photographs are taken in my house and yard in Wisconsin. It's probably because I tend to just happen on the subjects and only at home do I have the flexibility to stop and take a long exposure photograph. I'm sure I could go elsewhere and find interesting lighting situations, but I have more than enough to work on with just the stuff that appears in front of me. In plate 10 titled The Kitchen Sink, Dvorak writes, I suppose it evokes the calm of a lazy summer day, although this was done in the dead of winter. There is a beauty to the light that is hard to express verbally. Alfred Stieglitz did a series of abstracts of clouds to eliminate the emotional associations with the scene depicted. The variations in tone and lighting seem to express different emotions. He gave them the title equivalence to express the idea of the quality of the viewer's response to the light itself. I suppose this best expresses my feelings about light. As a photography teacher, I told my students that in order to be a successful photographer, you had to be in love with light. In plate eight titled Salad Spinner, Dvorak talks about some of the technical ramifications of how he makes his images. He writes, somewhat oddly for a pinhole photographer, I'm trying for rather formal composition. I'm basically an abstract expressionist at heart. My cameras are simple boxes made of foam core. This creates some difficulty in achieving formal composition. You really have to pre-visualize the picture. Speaking of the optics of pinhole, Dvorak writes in plate 15 titled Lemon, 
The optical effect most associated with pinhole photography is infinite depth of focus. If it's not moving, everything from the closest to the most distant object appears in focus. But there's no focusing going on. It's inherent in the image making process. Pinhole cameras are truly focus free. This is both a positive and a negative thing. On the negative side, it is impossible to have a sharp object separated from an out of focus background as you can with a large aperture lens. On the positive side, you never have to even consider focus, a constant concern with lenses. With pinhole, you just put the camera closer. Otherwise, the relationship of distance to the object, focal length, and image size is the same as with lenses. Dvorak makes his own cameras. In plate 17, camera portrait with self, he writes, partially in reaction to mega corporate photography and partly for the satisfaction of self-sufficiency. A big attraction of pinhole is making your own camera. Cameras are made out of about any container you can think of. People have taken photographs by putting the film in their mouth and using the gap in their teeth as the pinhole. This creative engineering aspect of camera design drives a lot of pinhole photographers. In the pinhole of nature, Dvorak uses primarily paper negatives in primitive cameras. But he goes on to explain in plate 20, titled Sunbeam in the Bathtub, the dichotomy between the simplicity of how he exposes the negatives and the complexity with how he makes the prints. He writes, for the artist, one of the greatest consequences of the negative positive process is the endless expression that can take place during the making of the positive. I scan the negative and make prints on a color laser printer. Digital scanning and manipulation gives exactly the same kind of controls as can be done with your hands, chemicals, and a timer in the darkroom, except the range of effect is greater and the fineness of the manipulation is more precise. It also has the advantage of being able to produce exact copies of an image. A common response is that it is rather incongruous to make a negative by the most primitive method possible and then use such high-tech methods to make the positive. It is ironic, which is kind of appealing, but ultimately it's just the best way for me to perform my negatives. I'm sure these same kind of ironies were noted when Muddy Waters started using a Telecaster to play the blues, initially as a pragmatic matter in order to be heard over the rest of the band, but eventually becoming an integral part of the expression. In his Pinholica blog article dated uh, November 10th, 2020, titled Before F295, The Pinhole of Nature, Nick talks a little bit about the formative years of his pinhole photography. He had come to be acquainted with Tom Miller of the League of Upper Midwest Pinholers who used to organize events for the Minnesota Center for Photography and in the spring of 2003 Dvorak was invited by Miller to come and make a speech or a talk about pinhole photography and in the preparation for his talk he thought about Fox Talbot and his attempt to explain photography to the masses who had never known photography before. Dvorak decided to use the pencil of nature as a model or a template for his talk. I got to know the work of Nick Dvorak through my participation in the F295 Pinhole Photography Discussion Forum and it impressed me immediately when I first saw Nick's work that he had a consistency about his work that mine lacked and he had a process or a methodology about which he went about doing his photography that impressed me. And since the demise of the F295 discussion forum and the members of that community have kind of dissolved away into the larger world of photography, I continue to follow Nick Dvorak's Pinholica blog and what continues to impress me about his work is his consistency in his camera making projects and his use of 35 millimeter roll film and the way that he documents his life around his home, his gardens and around his larger community. And it's this larger body of work built up through the consistency of years, I think, that makes Dvorak's work so inspiring to people like me.